Hey, hi everybody. This is Moss Jackson. Welcome to Mondays with Moss. I've been thinking about what this program is about. I've been doing this series, Living an Extraordinary Life, um, since the pandemic, I guess since February. And that's a long time. It's the longest time I've been on Facebook Live and giving talks. And I think the program that I've been attempting to create for you is really an appreciation that life at times is not easy. You know, there are pitfalls, landmines, problems, upsets, stressors, disappointments, tragedies that we have to experience, and sometimes we don't handle them very well. So this is not a program about teaching you how to um, slip into those disappointments. It's, uh, we, we do that quite naturally. I don't need to teach you that. <coughs> it's really about appreciating how things can break down, the stresses, the disappointments, and looking at a formula and a toolkit, or about nine or ten tools that you can use to construct, um, plan, create, and execute on really looking at what do you want in life, what's important, and some tools that you can use to execute so you can get what you want. Now, uh, I'm not the first to do this kind of program. There are others who have gone before me and are still doing it. Many of them on YouTube, you can find them. Just look under success and there'll be many. This is just my particular version based upon my first book, Navigating for Success. You know, um, and um, I hope you've been finding this series useful. And um, uh, so today I want to ask you a question. Do you remember a time, maybe in grade school, when you had recess in school? Recess. You would have a timeout. You would get a break. And the teacher would say, go out, go out to the playground, run around, get dirty, do what you want to do. Remember when you, all the kids would just kind of stream out of, the, out of the school like a gushing waterfall? And they would just jump all over the place and rush and tumble like in my, my, my school. What I would do is often play ball, play catch, run around, be physical stuff. The girls sometimes would play hopscotch or jump rope. In those days, we had a lot of physical activity that they would not use cell phones because we didn't have them. So that's called a recess, a timeout. It was more than just going out and enjoying the uh, 15, 20 minutes. It's actually something really important physiologically, psychologically that's important in terms of called take a break. So this talk today is about take a break today. Give yourself a break, okay? So I want to t tell you a story about Tracy Austin. Austin was a, a tennis player, uh, not very tall, not big like the Williams sisters or powerful like them, but she was um, a tennis player, I think um, probably in the early 2000s. Uh, she was very interesting because she was, uh, given her size and her power, which was just average for a professional tennis player, she had the best percentage wins in the third set. So if she's playing in 80, 85, 90 degree temperature and the humidity is up there around 80, 90 percent, somehow she was able, able to weather that storm and come back in the third set and win the third set, and that, that, that's really made her a champion. She would often win the first set, lose the second, then come back in the third and, and just absolutely uh, overwhelm her, her, her opponent. Now, why was that? Well, she was studied. She was studied, in turn, I think it was a, a book called um, Maybe High Performance. And the research was very interested what made her so unique and so different. How was she able to be so resilient and be a champion? So they hooked up electrodes to different parts of her body, remote. They could test her cardiovascular, her respiratory system. And what she would do is after every point, whether or not she won or lost, she would take about 30 seconds to turn her face away from the net really fast. She would not stare at her opponent, not glare at the um, umpire, if that's what it's called, turn her back and take about 30 seconds to walk back to baseline. And she would look at her strings on her um, racket and rub her fingers. 
And the researchers in the initial part of the study thought she was just rearranging the strings. But something fascinating was happening. When she did that, by the time she got back to baseline, her cardio system, her respiratory system, had, had dropped in exertion by around 30%. So what did that mean? It meant that by the third set, when she went into the, 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 the finding set to win or lose the match, she had about 30% more energy, more respiratory, more oxygen in her body to win the third set. So she was really able to go up against stronger, more powerful players in the third set and win. So that recess, that recovery time, that break time gave her the winning edge. So how does that relate to you? As I know most of you, if any of you, are, are, are not professional tennis players. But the question is, do you want to start, uh, stop straining and pushing and coming home exhausted or angry or agitated and or exhausting yourself and find a way to increase your energy but you get by the time so by the time you get to the third set of your work day maybe by three o'clock or four o'clock you have more energy you can be more efficient because the results show that when you can take a break for example well i'll tell you about actually your performance increases what the research shows is this high performers whether not they're athletes or salespeople or um, actors or musicians or whatever, you are capable of working hard, like running like a sprinter, for about 90 to 120 seconds, 120 minutes, 90 to 120 minutes, and then you need a break. If you don't take a break, you're gonna probably be in danger, unless you're exceptional, that when you get to around three or four o'clock, you will not win the third set of life. See, so those, those athletes and high performers in business who are able to take a break, maybe 15, 20 minutes, once or twice a day, had about 30 to 40% more energy to be more productive, to be more efficient. So they, they really succeeded. That's quite amazing, isn't it? So life in a way for high performers is run like a sprinter, but then take time on time off, take your recess every day, every day. I mean, Maybe, maybe you think having a weekend to recover, taking a vacation to recover will do it for you. It really doesn't. I mean, if you're, if you're like me, I, I don't feel really relaxed when the weekend starts. Well, I used to not feel really relaxed, but now I do because I practice taking a break every day, two breaks, maybe even more a day, 10 or 15 minutes. I'll tell you about what I do and what you can do to increase your efficiency, effectiveness, and the quality of your life. Okay, so how about if we just jump into the action? So here are some um, general things called a perspective that you can do. I think number one, you have to give yourself some self-compassion. Like all of us go through the day, we have disappointments and upsets and frustrations. And rather than agitating and blaming yourself and attacking others and um, being, having regrets, give yourself a break by having a little compassion. Say, look, I tried hard. It just didn't turn out. Catch your breath and go back and try again or see what you can learn from your mistakes. Another one is have your disappointments, but don't become a disappointment. In other words, disappointment is just a reaction to something that didn't turn out. So what? Most of life, things don't turn out. We want to increase our percentage of things working out, but when they don't, have your disappointment, have your frustration, give yourself three to five minutes, then let it go, catch your breath, but don't absorb it and think there's something wrong with you. Another one is have a growth mindset. A growth mindset is learn from your mistakes. If you're a high performer, if you want to be one, like a navigator of life, you have mistakes. I make lots of mistakes in my paintings, in my writing, in these talks, in my therapy, in my coaching. And because I'm open to realizing mistakes with things that don't work out, I talk to my clients about it. I say to them, hey, did that work out, that suggestion? And sometimes I say, no, that, that didn't work out at all, but I tried something else. I used to, in my early years, get upset about it, think I was failing, they would be disappointed in me, or they would be disapproving. Now I realize, 
I think most of my clients appreciate it because I'm, I'm modeling. It's no big deal. Have your mistake, learn from it, and do something different. Okay. Another one, general general perspective, is is a question. Is, a question. is this the hill you're going to die on? Really, is what you're doing that important? Are you a nuclear scientist? Are you a physician doing surgery? Um, are you operating on somebody? Um, um, are you the director of a, a reservoir for Philadelphia? No, you're probably not. <clears throat> so really, whatever you do, don't take yourself too seriously. So, so here are some specific actions you can take to take a break. Let's say you decide to uh, take my suggestion and take 15, 20 minutes and take a break in the morning, mid-morning, mid maybe mid-afternoon. Okay, this is what my clients tell me. They're really, really helpful. They take a break. They've had to kind of change their perspective called, I'm not cheating. I'm not running away. I'm not avoiding work. I'm not being irresponsible. In fact, I'm being responsible because I'm running like a sprinter, but between sprints, I got to take a break. Okay, here are some of them. Take a walk. Go outside, uh, take a walk around, be, get in nature. If you can't do that, walk around the halls. Um, just stretch your body. In fact, um, um, a stretch. Every once in a while when I'm, I'm doing therapy or coaching at home, uh, I'll take a break, I'll stretch. I may lift a couple weights. Um, I might go outside. I might even, if, if someone's talking to me on the phone, I'll just do a phone session uh, while I'm taking a walk for uh, a half hour, 45 minutes, or an hour. Big difference. Third, you can meditate for that 15 or 20 minute with an app. Go on a Headspace or an Inkscape. They're great meditation exercises you can take that really have a benefit to calm you down and increase your energy. Meet a friend. Chat with a friend. Uh, babble. Talk about TV series. Um, uh, don't talk about work, but talk about The Crown. Talk about whatever TV series you're watching and enjoying. Now here's one. I mean, I've discovered lately the value of essential oils. So I love a lavender, for example, as a way of relaxing me. La lavender has been so shown to decrease headaches, decrease anxiety and depression, and help me, uh, help me with sleep. I don't often get headaches, but I do get anxious. I re rarely get depressed, but I do have some sleep problems and I want to use lavender. Um, I'm not a physician, so this, I'm not prescribing this. I'm just suggesting you might look into this, some, some essential oils that you can use. You basically take some, you pour it in the cup of your hand and you inhale it and maybe then rub it on your temples and see what happens. It may work for you. Another one is interact with an animal. Now, we, we don't have that many animals available, but, but probably a dog a cat. I think those are the basic ones. I have a colleague in my office at the Center for Psychological Services where she brings her dog in quite often and the dog sometimes roams the hallway, comes down to visit us, but most of the time stays with her and she looks calm and youthful and very productive. She's one of the most productive psychologists on the main line. So spend some time with the dog. Listen to music. Whatever the music is, turn it on, uh, turn off your e email, turn off your iPhone or whatever. Listen to some music for a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and, and enjoy it. You might take a reading break and read something that's enjoyable. Not, not your email. Don't read that. Drop that. Do something else that's enjoyable. Maybe you can learn from it. Um, another one is a good. Take a, a power break. I used to have a, a um, college roommate who after college was an Air Force pilot. And he came to visit us once and he was uh, traveling quite a long, way, a long way for about driving for about 10 or 12 hours. Came in, said hello, says, Moss, can I, can I take a short nap on your couch? He laid down on the couch for about 15, 20 minutes, woke up and he looked refreshed. We had a short bite, chatted for, for a while, then he was off to wherever he was going. I said to him, Al, What's the benefit of that? He says that's a power break. It really increases my energy, uh, it nourishes me, it stabilizes my emotions. And what he told me was from in, in the Air Force at the academy, he learned these power breaks restored brain functioning. So maybe take a power break. If you're on the couch, lie down on your rug. Okay? 
Um, yeah, those are some of the actions you could take. I think the bottom line is this. We're living through a pandemic. We're living through political chaos, living through economic difficulty. These are not easy times. Our country is under stress. It's the invisible plague, not just the uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have a lot of stresses we have to live with, besides the normal stresses of everyday life. We do know that chronic stress decreases quality of life. It decreases our functioning. It also kills us. You know, chronic stress, and I think we're in a chronic stress period. We've been in this eight or nine months. That's a long time. It attacks your soft tissue, attacks your cardiovascular tissue, attacks your respiratory tissue, it attacks your digestive tissue. It increases your blood pressure. So get, get a life and um, uh, think about what's really important. If, if living a good life and designing a life and living an extraordinary life and not taking it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Sooner or later, the stress is gonna catch up with you. So my advice, my suggestion is take a break. Take a break. If your manager or boss says, what are you doing, you're being lazy? Blame it on me. Say, Dr. Jackson said, take a break. Have them call me, have her call me. I might be able to help her realize the importance of take a break. Hey, so next week, what I'm gonna do I'm going to pull everything together that I've been talking about over the last eight or nine months. Navigating for success, having a, designing a life, an extraordinary life. I'm going to attempt to kind of bring it down into a package. The formula, the tools, and just summarize it for you. And I really appreciate any of you who have stayed through um, these, these talks. Some of you have, have listened in when I've given the talks live. Some of you have caught it during the week. So if you have, great. I hope, I hope you found it helpful. And so I'm gonna do my best to summarize it for you and then talk to you about an exciting new series that I'm gonna do uh, moving after next week as we move into, past, um, into the beginning of December. So anyway, I uh, hope you take a break. I will. It's about, um, uh, what is it, about 11.30, according to me right now. So I'm going to talk to my wife a little bit, have a little snack, and then go back and run my next sprint. I'm going to do a Tracy Austin. All right, guys, be well. Take good care.